Hello, my friends. I'm Dave from Polypad, and in this Polypad pointer video, I'm going to show you some ways to use the tools on Polypad to explore multiplying mixed numbers and fractions. I have four examples that I'm going to do in this video. This is not a canvas that I would use as is with students. I've picked four examples to show how you might use these in a progression with a lot of other examples to get to a point where students have good understanding of the process of multiplying a mixed number and a fraction. I'll put the link to this canvas in the comments in the video. Um, and so let's get started. First, I'm gonna model three and a half groups of four fifths. And this I might do with students when they're first thinking about mixed number and fraction multiplication, just to get a sense of what this question is asking and how we can represent this uh, visually with some fraction tiles. So I'm gonna use the fraction circles here and I'm gonna build three and a half groups of four fifths. So I'll pull out a fifth and with this black handle, I can click and drag to change the number of pieces. So I'll stop at four fifths and there is a group of four fifths. I need three and a half of those. So there's three. And now I need a half of that group. So here is four fifths. I need a half of that. If students are having trouble thinking about taking half of that, I find that if I just turn off the labels, it might make them be more successful. So under labels on this, uh, on this last piece, I'm going to go to none. And now that question of what's half of this, this group might be a little bit more attainable for students. So there are four pieces, half of it is two. So there are the two pieces. And then if I want to turn the labels back on, I can do that. I have made three and a half groups of four fifths. I could take this and I could split it up into pieces to put this over here to make a hole. So I can see there's a hole and then I could do that with the other one. But I want to merge those back together just to get this piece and I want to show you a fun feature on Polypad. I'm going to select all of these with a click and drag. And then when I click merge, when this whole group is selected, Polypad is going to automatically make holes for me. And it's a fun animation that I think students will enjoy as well. So here we go. I'll click merge. Oop, there we go. I see the answer is two and four fifths. Wonderful. So I, I, I made three and a half groups of four fifths. And I see the answer here is two holes and four fifths. If I wanted to get these to holes, I can hit the rename option to show that it's a full circle, if that's something I'm interested in doing. And then here on this canvas, I've used our question builder tile where students can enter the answer two and four fifths. I hit enter and I get this little check. Awesome. So now I've taken that same question and I want to think about it in a different way. Here I want to do four and a half or four fifths of a group of three and a half. So just to model this a different way, I'm going to build three and a half on the canvas. I'm using the C button on my keyboard to make a copy very quickly. There is three and a half. And I like that I can copy this just to show how I'm, I'm thinking about this question. So again, I just use the C button. I'll keep my original picture of three and a half, but now I need to take four fifths of this entire picture. So I'll start with the holes. I've clicked and dragged to select the three holes. And I'm going to use the option in the action bar to give these fraction bars a different name. So I'm going to click um, this action to rename it here. And I get it to halves, thirds, fourths, and fifths. And now that it's in fifths, I can take four fifths of that. I would have this conversation with students that at thirds, it'd be hard to take four fifths of it because I don't have it into five total pieces yet. So there it is as fifths. And I'll do the same with the half. I want to stop where I get to five pieces. So here uh, you can see when I click this option to rename, it's only making equivalent fractions. So it goes from a half to two fourths to three sixths to four eighths to five tenths. Here I have five pieces now, so I would be successful in taking four fifths of that. And again, this option to turn off the labels might be helpful for students as they're thinking about at what point should they stop with the renaming. So now I can take four fifths of this. I'm going to use um, 
the handle that's in the shape of a triangle to change the shading of each of the fraction bars. So now I'm seeing that I had three and a half. Here I have changed the amount that's shaded in to conduct that action of taking four fifths. I'll copy this again. And now I'm going to use the black handle to change the number of pieces to try to make sense of my final answer. So now I will, um, maybe I'll take these tenths, I'll use the option to rename, that becomes fifths, which is really nice. Five fifths is a whole, so I have to split this up. And again, my answer is two wholes and four fifths. So I can enter two and four fifths. Oh, I did two and three fifths. I get this red X. I wanted to show you what happens if I get a wrong answer. Two and four fifths is great. These are the same questions thought about in very different in very different ways, right? And I think there's there's value in students thinking about this multiplication question as three and a half groups of four fifths and doing that, or four and four fifths of a group of three and a half. Let me do one more example, three and a third times four fifths. Uh, there's the third, I'll come back to that. I meant to start with the one. So here is three and a third. And I'm just doing a couple of different examples all at once. Again, if you're doing this with students, adapt it to ways that make sense for your classroom. Maybe do a bunch of examples like this, and then maybe move to examples like this and so on. So again, I have the same thing where I need to take four fifths of that. So I'll use the option to rename it till I see five pieces. There we go. And the same thing down here till I get to five pieces. That's fifteenths. I'll copy all of this and then I will change the amount of shading that's going on. So there's four fifths of that. Uh, if students again are having trouble maybe turning off the labels and saying I just want four fifths of that and not distracted by the labels of the 15th, so then I can turn them back on. There we are. So there is four fifths of three and a third. I'll copy this again just to keep track of my work, change the um, actual amount of pieces that I have. Here, maybe I'll split this one up and uh, move this to make a hole, move this to make a hole, uh, take this one, put it here. I need to figure out what fraction this is, uh, a fifth and a fifth and four fifteenths. So maybe changing these, I'll merge those together and make those fifteenths, merge all of these together and use the rename option to simplify that to two and two thirds. So here I get two and two thirds, awesome. But the goal here is as students experience this on Polypad, we want them to move from the concrete to the abstract, right? So they are ready to understand and think deeply about these calculations without always having to do it with fraction bars on Polypad. So here is a way to maybe think about moving towards an abstraction. So I'm gonna do the same question, three and a third times four fifths. Let me add it as a, as a text box here. So we'll do three and a third times four fifths. So that same question that we just did, I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see it, thinking about how we could use these tools to help students move towards an abstraction of the process. So here is three and a third, right, times four fifths. I'll take this whole thing and copy it again. Oops, I don't want the equation, there we go. I'll just copy that. And the first thing I'm gonna do is make it so it's the same size piece. So I know that on this one, in order to take four fifths of it, I need to get it into five pieces, which is 15 So I'm gonna do the same thing with the holes. I'm gonna get them into 15 So I'll keep clicking till I have 15 There we go. Uh, actually, I want to um, undo that for one moment here. I might actually stop here at thirds, I forgot about a step I wanted to do in the middle. I might first do this to show that, okay, let's let's get the entire picture into the same number of pieces, and because this is thirds, I'll make that thirds. And the reason I want to do that first is now I have 10 thirds. So I've shown here that that three and one third is the same as 10 thirds. So that first step that we often talk about is taking the mixed number and making it an improper fraction, I'm doing that by saying that I, I want all the pieces to be the same size. All right, so now that I've done this, 
I'll copy this whole thing and move it down and scroll down a little bit. Now it's time for the action of taking four fifths of that. And here's the time to have the conversation of say, oh, if I want to take a fifth of, of this, having each bar into three pieces or even one piece is not helpful. So I need to get my holes into a situation where I could take four fifths of it. That looks good, but on this one third, I can only get there where I'm at fifteenths. And in moving to the algorithm, I would have the conversation with students that the goal is to get all the pieces to be the same size. So there are the fifteenths. And now I'm ready for this action of taking four fifths of it. Uh, a fifth of 15 is three, so I will unshade in three of them and do the same here. Unshade in three of them and here unshade one. And I could count all the 15ths, right? It's 12, 24, 36, and 40. So I like here that I see this came out to 40 15ths. And that shows that process of 10 times 4 is 40, and 3 times 5 is 15. So there are the 40 15ths. And now I just need to take this and do some merging and moving to find the answer as a, as a mixed number, if that's something you're interested in doing with students. So I could take, I could do this move. Uh, I'm going to split this one up and then take three of them to make a hole. I'll do one more over here. I'll split this up. I need two more of them to make another hole. So there are my two holes. Uh, this bottom fraction, I'll merge it back together. Do a rename option to see that my answer is two and two thirds. Wonderful. So uh, I think that that is a nice way to think about how to get to the abstraction of making the mixed number into an improper fraction. And then when you change the shading to find four fifths of it, you end up with 40 over 15. I hope this was helpful in giving you some ideas of how you could use these tools to create a whole set of activities and experiences for students to explore multiplying a fraction and a mixed number. You can see on this polypad that I, I shared with you, I have limited the tiles available in the sidebar just to the fraction bars and the fraction circles. And I've created a polypad that feels like a, like a notebook as I scroll down the page, more and more content appears. If you want to learn how to do that, in our tutorial playlist on YouTube, there's a video called Changing Polypad Settings. So go explore that uh, if you're interested. Uh, again, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful.